What's up guys? In this video, I'm gonna be going over how to solder. I'm gonna be using this Mamba practice board. This board is only $2 and it basically just simulates a flight controller and all the pads that you would find on it. So if you're just getting into soldering, I would definitely recommend getting one of these so that you can learn how to solder properly. And if you do something wrong, you're gonna ruin this $2 board as opposed to an $80 flight controller. <laughs> All right, so before we get into any soldering, let's go over some of the basic equipment that you're gonna need so that you can solder properly. Obviously the most important piece of equipment for soldering is your soldering iron. This is a soldering iron that I use. I've been using this for a few months now and I love it. This has a variable temperature control, on off switch, a brass sponge down here for cleaning, interchangeable tips, and then extra tips along the side. And then over here, you have a little spool holder for your solder. I'll leave a link to this soldering iron in the description, but if you're shopping around four different soldering irons, make sure that it has a variable temperature control. For solder, I would recommend a 60-40.6 millimeter solder. This is lead-based, and it makes it a lot easier to solder to the pads. Although that's all you really need to solder, there are a couple other things that you can get that make your life a lot easier. So let's go over some of the items right here one of these mats. You're definitely gonna want one of these if you're doing a lot of soldering. Not only does this protect your working surface, but it ha most of them have little compartments where you can keep screws. And it's a good way to keep everything nice and organized. Tweezers. Tweezers just make it a lot easier to hold the wire that you're soldering. A flux pen. Flux just makes solder adhere to the pads a lot easier. A solder sucker. Basically, this just sucks up globs of solder. I'd also recommend a pair of these helping hands. These are very useful for when you're dealing with multiple components or multiple wires, and you're trying to get stuff to just sit in one spot, and then you can have one thing here and one thing over here. If you can't afford something like this, I would recommend Blue Tack. Now, Blue Tack, I think I paid $2 for this. If you can't afford those helping hands, I would definitely get some of this stuff. Push it down, and then if you're soldering to this board, just push the board down on there. And now that's on the table, and you can, you know, solder to it. And I would also recommend eye protection. So, like I said, I'm using this little practice board. This practice board has a bunch of different pad types. You have these over here. This is kind of the pad that you would see on a flight controller or on an ESC for the battery leads. You have some pins over here and these pins go through the holes. So it's kind of like a servo plug. And then these are pads that you would normally find on like an ESC. And then there's a whole bunch of different types of pads in here. So this is what it looks like when you take it out of the package. This is one that I was playing with yesterday, just kind of practicing. So just in case you don't have any, they do include a little bit of solder here. So I'm gonna use my helping hands for this and I'll probably bounce around and probably use this a little bit. So depending on what pad you're soldering to on your board will depend on what tip you use on your soldering iron. So this tip right here is a tip that I would use for a smaller pad, so like these ones over here. And then this tip right here is one that I would use for the battery leads, like these ones down here, or some of these bigger ones. I would probably use this one. So since I'm gonna be soldering to some of these smaller pads, I'm gonna keep that tip on there. I'm gonna turn my soldering iron on and usually I run it at a temperature of 420 degrees Celsius. If you're just starting out soldering, I would keep the soldering iron temperature to around 375, maybe 400, because the hotter iron you have, the more likely you are to rip up some of these pads and overheat the components in the board. Whereas if you have a cooler temperature, there's a much less likely chance that you'll do damage to your board. 
So I'm going to start with some of these pads right here on the very bottom, and then I'm going to work my way to these and then these. So gradually smaller, I'll probably just kind of hop across, but these pads are great to practice on because as you can see, you kind of have a couple millimeters here, a couple millimeters here, and then it just kind of gets tighter and tighter. And you'll see that on a lot of flight controllers and they have that across all the different pads that they have on this practice board. So I'm gonna start with this pad right here. Now, before I start soldering, I'm gonna apply a little bit of flux to this pad right here using my pen. And this just makes it so that the solder sticks a lot better to that pad. You can solder without this, but it just makes it a lot easier. For this pen, I just press down and a little bit of flux comes out and it's on there. So now I can actually just kind of go across all these. So the way that you want to solder is using your soldering iron, you're going to want to heat up the pad that you want to solder. And you don't want to hold it really long. You just want to heat it up enough to melt this solder. And then the solder is just going to fill the pad and you lift up. Put the tip down on the pad you want to solder. Let it sit for a second. Put the solder right between the tip and the pad and push the solder in and then lift up. So that's how you get the cleanest solder joints. And this applies to all the different sized pads. Now I didn't put any flux on that. And as you can see, the solder didn't stick to the entire pad. So if I heat this up, it will eventually go to the entire pad. But flux just makes it a lot cleaner. So let's put some flux on the pad right next to it and we'll see what that one looks like compared to this one. It's a lot cleaner and it goes to the pad a lot faster. The tinier pads are obviously going to be a lot more difficult. Once your soldering iron starts to get all gunked up with extra solder, you're going to want to make sure that you clean it in that brass sponge. So this is basically just tinning the pad. This is getting the pad ready to put a wire on it. So now let's put some solder on these four pads up here. Now these are a little bit bigger than the ones that I was just working on. So this might take a second longer to heat up. So let's put a little bit of flux on one of these, like that. We'll do the same thing, put the tip right on the pad and heat up the pad and then drive the solder right in between the two and it should just heat up the pad right away. So now let's see how that goes on a pad without any flux on it. It still worked. Like I said, you don't have to use flux. It just makes it a lot easier when you're soldering sometimes. Flux basically just clears off the pad of any junk that's on there. So these are some pretty clean uh, soldering joints that I just did. That's what you want your soldering joints to look like. So I'm going to start soldering on some of these pins down the very bottom over here. I set the temperature of my iron to 350, so this will still heat it up enough to melt it, but it'll be a lot slower. So when I put this on here, it's going to take longer for the pad to heat up enough to get the solder. And as you can see from that solder joint, that's a bad solder joint. You don't want it to bubble up like that. If something like this happens, you can take your soldering iron and you can just kind of shoo it off and get it to a point where it's somewhat flush. 
that. Or you can also use a solder sucker. And that's this thing. So the way you use a solder sucker is you heat the solder up and then suck it up. Now all the solder is right in the tip. I typically just use the method of heating it up and then kind of just hitting it off. But you can use a solder sucker if there's just way too much of it. The only time I'd really use a solder sucker is if there is a lot of solder really chunked up. Actually, let me show you real quick. So I would use solder sucker on something like this. If I ended up soldering a pad that looked like that, that's what I would use a solder sucker for. That's not the kind of glob that you can just kind of scratch off with your soldering iron. Another thing to keep an eye out for is if your joint starts looking like this. If you have a joint that looks like that, obviously that's no good, but that's kind of telling you that the temperature of your soldering iron might be a little too cold. So that happens when the base of the solder cools, but the top part where the soldering iron is, is still hot. And then when you move the soldering iron away, it kind of makes this cone shape. So try boosting the temperature of your soldering iron if you're seeing stuff like that. Another thing to keep an eye out for is a bridged solder. So this will happen typically on pads that are really close together. It could happen on something like this. Uh, the distance that these two pads are from each other, you probably won't have anything like that happen. But when you get to pads that are like this, these ones are very easy to uh, bridge. So when you bridge it, you're basically connecting this pad to this pad. And if you have a five volt in the ground and you bridge those, you're gonna fry your equipment. So let me show you what a bridge connection looks like. There we go. Those two pads are now connected. You don't want that. And again, you can use a solder sucker or you can just use the tip of your soldering iron and just kind of heat it up real quick and then right like that. So that's basically how you solder on a board. Now let's go over how you prep a wire so that you can solder it to the board. So here I have a little connector. I'm not sure what this goes to, but what I want to do first is just kind of strip the ends of the wires off so that I can solder it. So I'm going to basically just expose the wire. Like that. And now you want to just kind of go wire by wire and just kind of twist it so that the strands of wire all twist together. And once you have them all together like that, you can secure this. And this is actually something that I would use the blue tack for. So you put the blue tack right here, and then you can just take this and kind of just stick it right to it. So with the ends of the wire all twisted, you're gonna to wanna to take your soldering iron and hold it up to the wire, and then you're gonna to to push the solder into the soldering iron and the wire. And that just kind of tins the tip of this wire right here. So I'm going to do that to all of these and they're all basically just going to be pre-tinned with a little bit of solder on the end and this will make it a lot easier to connect to the flight controller. So I'm going to solder this connector right here to some of these connectors on this side. All I'm going to do is just kind of grab the wire with my tweezers and again you don't need tweezers it just makes it a little bit easier since they're so fine grab my soldering iron gonna line this wire up with the pad that I want it on and now when I put the soldering iron on the pad and the wire they're just gonna melt together right like that 
nice and quick. You want to be as quick as you can when soldering because you don't want to heat up the components in your board. The longer you hold your soldering iron on the board, the hotter it's going to get and the more likely chance you have of damaging something. So now I'm going to solder up the rest of the wires. I'm going to just go right next to that. So I'll do black next. Same kind of thing. Grab the wire, hold it right above. Sometimes I bend the wire down, makes it a little easier. And then when it's on top of the pad, slightly touch the two together. There you go. Probably put a little bit more solder on that. soldered to the board and pretty cleanly so you can have things soldered going out of the board and you can also have them soldered facing in so so instead of having this go out you could have a wire coming in and if you're doing something like that you might want to pay attention to these other pads that are in the way and if you're having them all run in you're gonna to want to solder those ones first before you do some of these it just makes it a lot easier so now let's hop over to this side of the board where we have these pins. And these are specifically for servo pins, like this. I rarely use these. I don't have a lot of things that use this other than my uh, QX7. But what you want to do is if you are using things like this, these should line up. Put it right through there. And now you want to solder from this side. And again, what makes this a lot easier is if you use some flux and you don't have to put any on the needle side, but if you put it on this side where you're gonna be doing your soldering, it just makes it 10 times easier. Put these through like that, put it down, and you can just kind of use the weight of the board to hold it. Take your soldering iron and your solder And I'm gonna start with this one on the far end, but you wanna basically just try and heat up the pin coming through and then feed the solder into the pin and into the pad. And there you go. That's how you solder pins. So now let's do some thicker wires. So let's put some wires on these pads right here. So this is more of an ESC kind of wire or a wire that you'd find on a motor, but you're gonna, it's pretty much the same concept. You're gonna wanna put some solder on the end of the wire to get that ready for the pad that you've already tinned. So I'm just gonna use this to hold it. I'm gonna take the soldering iron and I'm gonna hold it up against the tip of the wire, get that hot, and then I'm gonna feed the solder into the wire. Right like that. And now that end has solder on it. Position the wire where I want it. I'm gonna have it just right over the pad. And when you heat up the wire, that's going to transfer through the wire and into the pad, and they're just going to melt together. Right like that. Then you have a nice, clean joint. So now let's move on to these pads down here. Now these pads are gonna be pads that you see on an ESC or a flight controller for the battery. So this will have battery plug on the other side. So these are typically bigger wires, bigger pads, and since it's bigger, you're gonna need a bigger tip. So I'm gonna turn the temperature down on this and I'm gonna swap this tip to a tip this sized. Typically, haha, <laughs> I get it, whatever dude. I only use these two tips right here 
this one for bigger joints and this one for finer joints. All right, so I have the new tip on my soldering iron. I'm gonna just clean it off, make sure it's nice and clean. And for this, I'm not gonna use the blue tack. I'm gonna go back to using the helping hands. So I'm gonna just solder this XT60 to uh, these right down here. I'm gonna go with two in the middle because those these ones are far apart. These ones are close together. So I'll just go with like these two. Flux makes it easier. And I think what I'm actually gonna do is put some on the other side as well. Use these two. So now I'm gonna take my soldering iron and my solder. And I'm just gonna do basically the same thing I did on all these other pads. So I'm gonna hold it kind of near the center, kind of at an angle like that heat up the pad and I'm gonna just feed the solder right into the soldering iron. It's gonna go across the whole pad and then since it's flat you can use the flat end to heat the entire thing. Right like that. There we go. So now these two pads are prepped for our battery lead. So now I'm gonna pre-tin the power leads. So I'm gonna take the same tip, I'm gonna go right on the very top, right like that, and you can see the solder melting, and then I'm gonna feed solder into it just to pre-tin it. These wires already have some solder in them. I'm just gonna add a little bit so that it sits better on the board. Now since these power pads have a cutout for the wire, it's actually gonna sit very clean in the board. So I'm gonna put it right on top of the pad. I'm gonna take this, kinda of go at a slight angle so that I can heat up the wire and the pad at the same time. And as those heat up, the wire should fall down into the pad and create a nice clean joint. So I think that's gonna do it for this video. Um, hopefully this helps you out. If you're getting into soldering, keep an eye out for bridged connections like that because if you have something like that, you can ruin your entire flight controller. You can get these things called smoke stoppers and basically what these do is they plug in from the battery to the flight controller. So you would plug this into here and then you plug your battery into this end. And if there is a bridged connection like this that could short out and burn your flight controller, this light will illuminate and stop that. So this is a nice little backup, but otherwise, whenever you're doing any soldering work, just double check your work, look for stuff like that, look for any bridged pads, anything that might be touching. When it gets to tiny pads like this, make sure you use a fine tip. When you're soldering on big pads like these, make sure you use a bigger tip. So hopefully this helps you out. If it did, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I do a lot of drone videos, drone builds, and like the video, leave a comment, whatever, dude. Thanks for watching.